Hey guys, in this video I'm going to attempt to make a fishing lure. I've been binge watching marling baits on YouTube. It's so satisfying to watch him handcraft each of his baits and then test them out. And eventually I was like, I just have to try making my own fishing lure. As always, I started by 3D modeling the first iteration in Fusion 360. I roughly based this lure on a photograph that I took of a bluegill that I caught about a year ago. If you've never gone fly fishing for bluegill, I highly recommend it. It's like the best way to get the skunk off the board and get your confidence back up if you've been struggling to catch fish. So after I printed out the first iteration, I tested it out in my bathtub and I noticed that it wasn't floating straight, it was kind of leaning to one side. So I realized that I had to do something to make it float upright. So I went back to the Marling Baits YouTube channel and I checked the thickness of most of his lures and noticed that they were much thicker than I'd previously realized and decided to remodel my lure to be a bit thicker in the body. So the way that the second iteration was floating in the bathtub was a huge improvement from the first iteration, but it was still kind of leaning a bit to one side. So I decided to model a third iteration with a lot more room for weight at the bottom. And with the added weight at the bottom, it was balancing quite nicely. Here is how I finished off making the final iteration. I started by cutting up split shot weights and made hook rings out of thick paper clips. I then filled the holes with a cut up split shot and baking soda and then added the hook loops and sealed everything with super glue. And I must warn you if you plan on using super glue and baking soda, beware that it does release toxic fumes that will give you a headache if you inhale too often and I don't know, it's probably not very good for you. Maybe, maybe not. 50-50. Next, I sanded down the excess super glue and baking soda blobs. Then I covered the gill plates and fin areas with duct tape and spray painted the bottom of the lure with silver spray paint. In hindsight, I wish I had painted it after covering it with brush on coating because the texture of the 3D print is now very apparent through the silver paint. Then I removed the duct tape. Unfortunately, some spray paint got on the top of the lure, so I sanded it down. Next, I attached the eye decals.
I added a blob of super glue under each eye to keep them secure before sealing everything. Then came time for the brush on coating. So my husband Chris and I went to a convention last year called Silicon, started by Adam Savage. So one of the stands had a raffle where you could win special brush on coating for 3D prints. All I had to do was fill in my name and email address. When I went back to see them pull out a name for the raffle, they had told me no one else had entered in the competition and that I could just have the prize. Four. Sounds good to me. So why am I going on this tangent? Well, since winning this prize, I've never tried using this stuff on any of my 3D prints until this project. So I was pretty excited to test it out. I went ahead and combined the two-part mixture to make the clear coat and painted it on my lure. I thought it looked pretty good. While drying, the resin did make a blob at the lowest hanging point of the lure, but I could easily sand it down. Finally, I attached the treble hooks and it was time to take this baby out for a spin. This video gave me a really good excuse to purchase my first ever bait casting setup. I tried buying an ugly stick off Amazon and learned the hard way that you probably shouldn't buy a fishing rod off Amazon because it may come packaged like this. At least I was happy with the Alloy M bait casting reel that I purchased off Amazon. I thought it was pretty good quality for the price. So after purchasing an ugly stick from Bass Pro Shop, I headed to my favorite bluegill pond to test out my lure. And when I got there, I realized that I had forgotten to put an SD card in my GoPro. But I tried my best to take as much footage as I could with my cell phone camera and my tripod. So amazingly, my lure actually caught a fish, but unfortunately it wasn't filmed because I had forgotten to press record on my cell phone camera. So I tried catching another fish on camera and I did get a pretty good bite, but unfortunately I didn't set the hook properly because I'm not really used to setting the hook with a bait casting rod. And unfortunately as soon as the fish jumped out of the water, it came off. So because I wasn't able to fully capture the lure's action with my cell phone camera, I decided to go to a second location with my GoPro. So after testing it, I realized I actually really like the action of this lure, even though it's sporadic and it doesn't necessarily move the same way every single time that you cast it. But it moves a lot better than what I thought it would. I was worried that it would be stiff. I like how the lure sways to one side when you abruptly stop retrieving. I noticed that when I reeled with my rod tip down that the lure had a tendency to dive a little bit. I think that makes for a good, lively and jerky action in the lure. Here is an issue that I had with the lure. So when I painted the lure with clear coat, I didn't paint it on the hinge because obviously that would have stopped the hinge from being able to move freely. But this exposed section of the lure allows water to seep into the 3D printed gaps and get stuck in the lure. So what ended up happening while I was fishing is that after a few hours, the lure got waterlogged and became extremely heavy and then ended up not even being a top water swim bait anymore and I think it actually stiffened up the action quite a lot. 
So I guess my final verdict is that it works pretty good as a top water swim bait for like two hours but then after it gets waterlogged it doesn't work so well anymore and it sinks very quickly. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out especially considering that it's the first lure that I've ever made. And hey, it caught a fish so I can't complain. I think it worked pretty well even if you can only fish with it for like two hours. Anyway guys, I really enjoyed doing this project. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!